Before we start making animations, let's first take a closer look at the animation editor, the animation properties, and the output to see how they all work together. The animation editor contains a timeline to create an animation using keyframes. To build an animation, you need at least two keyframes with different values. The animation is the transition that happens between those two values. I have a clip with an animation already set up here so I can show you how it looks like. In the timeline there are initially four tracks. One for pan movement, tilt, field of view, and one for projections. And each of them can be animated using keyframes. The playhead is currently at zero and it's sitting over four keyframes, one for each track. And here you can see the value of the keyframe at the playhead's location. In the properties, you'll see the settings for the animation project and for the clip you're currently working on. Each clip is added to the default sequence, and a sequence is a group of clips that can be played back in the order you choose. Under the sequence section are some settings for the current clip that's loaded in the animation editor. You can edit its title here and change its duration, and you can also set a clip to loop through its animation. And once your animation is done, you can either use it as an auto-rotation or export it as a video. When outputting as a video, choose the animation output type, and then define the video settings. If you're using your animation for auto-rotation, then add an HTML5 output and then open the auto-rotation and animation pane. And then there, you'll need to select auto-rotation and animation and then choose the sequence you want to use. 